Clear Tai Chi Mastermind Meeting for Friday, April 14th, 2023. Uh, today's topic will be being uh, Jim Kelly's family gathering topic. That family gathering is in June. It will be the first weekend in June, the first, uh, first, through the second, third, and fourth at Friday, Saturday, Sunday here in the Knoxville, Tennessee Airport Hilton. And the, uh, and that gathering will be all kinds of fun and push hands and different kinds of classes and um, lots of great food and fun and laughter and lots of fun. And the uh, Jim's topic will be being in the moment and he's gonna talk to you about that topic today with input from the rest of our crew here. And the uh, if you wanna see about signing up for that, go to taichigathering.com. That's tai chi gathering.com. Okay. So before we go into the next part here, I want to introduce everybody today. I'm Richard Clear, your resident host. Um, <laughs> welcome everybody. Art Don is with us. He is in Maryland, mm -hmm. outside of Washington, DC. He's going to tell you what part. Well, well, I'm in Greenbelt, Maryland. That is about 10 miles east of Washington, DC. Welcome, Art. Mark Mashad in um, Michigan. He's in central Michigan. He'll tell you what part. Hi, it's the uh, <clears throat> the Midwest Michigan area covering Grand Rapids and Lansing. Welcome. Ty Talbert in San Antonio, Texas, or one of the bedroom communities for San Antonio, Texas. He'll tell you which parts. Hey, everyone. I'm actually in Converse. I have classes in Converse and in Winston. Welcome. Jim Kelly in Boca Raton, Florida. I would yeah. say sunny normally, but today it's kind of rainy. <laughs> yeah, like we almost lost Fort Lauderdale to the ocean this week. <laughs> I've flooded out. But yeah, we're in Boca Raton. We have uh, also classes. I'm in West Boca. We have our school and then we have satellite locations in East Boca and Delray Beach with the Elaine Hom teaching, so. Welcome. Right. Jim Kanner in Costa Rica. He's going to tell us which parts. Hello, I'm uh, based in Guanacaste in the town of Las Catalinas in the northwest corner of Costa Rica. Welcome. Sheila Bell, also in Costa Rica, and she's going to tell us which parts. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. It's Valentine's Ideal Tai Chi, and I have classes in Playa del Coco and in Liberia, which is also in Guanacaste. So come to visit, and you can have a two for one with me and Jim, right? <laughs> visit the chocolate farm. You must visit the chocolate farm. That too, yeah. <laughs> and Mark already got you. And then Matt Hoker, the uh, regional organizer for uh, Maryville, Tennessee, and basically uh, outside of Knoxville, bedroom community for Knoxville. So, hi, everybody. Uh, Doing this from home today, try not to uh, cross infect anyone, but uh, listening intently. Mostly, mostly what we've got here is that pollen that's so thick at the moment that you can write your name on your car when you go out in the yellow pollen and all that. So, um, yeah, so it's going to be allergy, great allergy season. The, uh, okay, welcome, Matt. Uh, did I miss anybody? Okay. Um, all right. So, Jim, I meant to ask you earlier. The uh, do you know if you're coming or were you planning to come to the healing workshop this time or no? Which workshop, Sifu? The one, the healing workshop that's coming week after next. I was going to try to make the first two days. Um, I'm still, still, up in still the air. trying to work the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So, without further ado. Um, the other, the other, the big thing that we're promoting here, obviously, is the gathering itself. You really should come to the gathering. There's a bunch of classes, a bunch of fun, a bunch of push hands, a bunch of great food, a bunch of great people, and we are going to have a good time. Fun, fun. All right, and that's at TaiChiGathering.com. So, without further ado, um, Jim, uh, being in the moment. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. I'd like to start off and say thank you. <clears throat> I'm honored to to be presenting. I know uh, 
there's a lot of great people that, that come to that and give classes. I think this is what the third year, correct? Third year. Yeah. And Carly and I are going to get to attend this year. We were started off last year and then we had to take a little trip to the emergency room and yes, yeah, and then over to the hospital on the other side of the state. And Carly did got a lot better, but the, uh, we ended up missing the the event. We will not be doing that. We'll, we should be there the whole time this time. Yeah. Now took care of what was important. We we got on along without you there, but <laughs> missed you. <laughs> but uh, so it's uh, it's a great opportunity though to to see things from different perspectives. And I know a number of my students have come, and even the things that I tell them day in and day out, they heard it from somebody else, and they were like, "Ah, an aha moment." <laughs> It's like, amazing, this thing, you should have heard about it before. Yeah. <laughs> How come you never showed us? <laughs> but uh, it is, it's a, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. So, um, but again, this year I'm going to be presenting on, uh, on being in the moment. And, uh, you know, it, a lot of these things uh, that Tai Chi addresses, it, it amazes me. You know, you get so many people that, that treat it with such mysticism and, and, you know, well, it's, uh, you know, you, this is something that's far out there and, you know, it's a, uh, it's a foreign concept to a lot of people, but I, I think there's so many of these things though, that have parallels in everyday life and the being in the moment, if, if you've ever met somebody that was really, really good at, one of the things they do, whether it be a hobby uh, uh, or work or, you know, just a, an aspect of their lives. Uh, if you watch closely enough, you'll, there's a couple of similar characteristics that run through their life. And I, and I think this, this ability to be in the moment is, is one of those things. Um, uh, again, I'm going to address it uh, from the Tai Chi principles and, and how to, you know, how to work on it in the Tai Chi forms and, and movement. But, um, but if there's, you know, like I said, uh, if there's anybody that, uh, that, I mean, there's guys on this forum that, that have uh, hobbies and professions and, and uh, just certain parts of life that they're very good at. And, uh, if if anybody can throw in a little bit and uh, and see where this concept you know finds us in other parts of our lives, I I'd, I'd appreciate it. And you know, any feedback you have, or is there anybody with any stories about uh, the way they do things, or or have seen something done that was they can tell the person was really really in that moment. They weren't thinking of anything else but what they were doing and how it affected the quality of what they were doing. Uh, anybody? Yeah, ahead, Mark. Yeah, thank you. You know, I have a couple of a couple of thoughts on that. Uh, one would be if you're in some sort of uh, if you've ever been in an accident where all time seems to stand still, kind of. It's this kind of torturous moment that. You know, that last second, right before you hit the tree or you do whatever, right? Uh, it, uh, it's, like, it's like that second draws out, but you have no power to change anything. Yes. Is what it felt like at the time it happened. Um, and then uh, another one would be if you've ever seen something, um, it could be like, for example, maybe you're at a sporting event and something really cool happens Somebody makes this incredible catch, maybe a football catch or something. Right. That just, just, you know, it's totally unexpected. Some unexpected thing happens. Everything all of a sudden becomes super clear. Cause you're like, wow, what's that? And you get totally into whatever it is. Yeah. Those two, two great examples. And I, you know, just uh, Mark hit it on the head. I've uh, you know, I, I've done a lot of work with old cars and I've, as a police officer, I've been in a lot of, you know, high speed, uh, you know, right, riding on sidewalks and downstairs and <laughs> done all that kind of stuff. But I had an incident uh, 
I restored an old pickup truck and uh, I had taken it, <clears throat> taken it on a road trip and it had the original biased ply tires and it was, you know, everything on the truck was original. It had 20,000 miles on it. And I, uh, I was heading down a road and somebody jammed on their brakes in front of me. And with the old drum brakes, you just don't stop. <laughs> so between that and the, there were undulations in the road and there was a little bit of rain or water down here in Florida. And it, what Mark had said happened. And as I hit the brakes, the car started to turn and it actually spun 180 degrees and things slowed down so much that I was able to take the time. I checked my, my uh, looked over my shoulder, put the car in reverse and hit the gas just in time to come out of the spin and drive down the road backwards. <laughs> and I pulled off to the side of the road and people that were on the side passed me and they were clapping and they were whistling. <laughs> it looked like something out of stunt driving. <laughs> but yeah, that, that instant though, where everything slows down and your reaction time and your speed and you're, you're in that moment and you assess everything so clearly and, and you see things, you know, crystal clear, feel them. It, it, it is a, it's an interesting concept. Uh, to apply it to a, a car crash or potential crash. I was, in a car crash thing. Yeah. I was in a car crash, same thing, where because everything slowed down like that, I was able to actually do things so that I did not get injured, where there was stuff flying and stuff going on, where if I had not, if it hadn't been slowed down, just bang, it already happened, I wouldn't maybe have reacted to it. But if, since it was slow, it was kind of like that thing where it's like, no, I'm not going to get, okay, you know, and really making adjustments because I had time to do it. And within that frozen kind of a moment or a very super slow moment. Also, when I broke my back and was going down the hillside, I hit that slow moment, but there was no stopping going down the hillside. <laughs> gravity <laughs> took over. <laughs> yeah, gravity was, was our, had already taken over and I had no choices but to take the ride uh, for the worst. And that, 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 that. I didn't have a lot of ability to do anything about it um, because I wasn't in a position like I tried putting the foot out and causing that to slow me down and it didn't slow me down any and I realized if I caught into anything that was like a uh, root or something it was just going to break my snap my leg and so I put my leg back in on the sled and I had to take the ride because I didn't have a way out of it not yeah. one I could think of anyways yeah that's a that's an eye opener one yeah. Jim, I, I'm sure you got some good ones, Jim, on uh, being in the film industry there. <laughs> well, there's um, a very interesting concept out there called being in the flow, which is when you're doing something and you're just completely focused on that, which you are doing. And I think that is also a, it's another way of looking at being in the now. Because when you think about it, when you are in the now, you're not thinking about what you've done, you're not thinking about what's coming up, you're just focusing on what you're doing at that particular moment. And so you can think of being in the now as just another name for being focused, so that you're not paying attention to any other distractions. <clears throat> and one of the things that I find particularly interested, interesting rather, is when you are in that flow or in the zone, some people call it, uh, as several of you have mentioned, you don't really have a sense of time passing because you are completely absorbed in the current activity and that particular moment. So whether you're a shade tree mechanic and you're trying to set the timing on your car or you're doing something under the hood, you're not worrying about anything else. You're just focused on none, that one particular activity. And I think this is something that we aspire to in our Tai Chi practice. So that when we're doing our forms or we're doing our Ne Gong or we're working on our internal um, development, our negong, we're not worrying about anything else. We're just doing that at that particular moment. And then when we've reached the end of it, that's when we start coming out of that moment and we're becoming more aware of everything else around us. So in a way to become more in the moment, I think it's a matter of focusing on things to eliminate distractions and unnecessary stimuli. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, and and Jim, you you beat me to it. I I should have let off. I have a 
have a quote from uh, uh, Positive Psychology Today, and it's from a Mirko Thum. And the definition that he gives for being in the moment is being in the present moment or the here and now means that we are aware and mindful of what is happening at this very moment. We are not distracted by ruminations of the past or worries about the future, but centered in the here and now. All of our attention is focused on the present moment, which you described beautifully, Jim. Thank you. Well, thank you. We could start yeah. quoting you in psychology today. <laughs> just put Jim K. That way we can share the <laughs> Well, you know, and, and that also brings up something else that um, a lot of people don't really think about when they talk about being in the moment. There is a tremendous emotional liberation that comes from that, um, because there are those who will say that if you live in the past, you're going to be filled with anger and disappointment. And if you live in the future, you're living with anxiety. But if you're living in the moment, your, your emotions are going to be very calm and very centered. And to be able to achieve that uh, is a great ability if you are in situations that are rather disturbing or distracting or potentially emotionally um, could be devastating or just distracting. Yes. Right. Anybody else? I have a tie with the military and all the training, I'm sure. <laughs> You, you are on mute though, but oh, um, there are things that I could I could add to it as far as my own personal experiences, but I do think that you know what's been said by yourself and by Jim by the other Jim <laughs> could uh, it really sums it all up. I you know you have that time distortion, you know that instead of it feeling like it's been five or six hours, it feels like it's been five minutes. Uh, the idea that, you know, that just nothing else comes to mind. I, I think about when sports were brought up, I thought about when I played in a softball championship and I had a line drive hit straight at my face and I could see the spin on the ball. I could see the dirt on the ball. I could see everything, the most minute detail as it came at me. And then it knocked me down and I had it in my lung. And everybody's yelling and screaming. And it didn't seem like anything really special. It was just like, yeah, okay. This is what I did. And um, I was just so caught up in the moment. I didn't have any emotions about it whatsoever, one way or the other. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't elated. It was just like, yeah. I did this. Yeah, without thought, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, I just, I wanted to add that that was uh, part of why I, I studied, I started studying Tai Chi in the first place was my dad was very athletic and I had moments like that when I was growing up and um, he, call, he was called it the zone and I was fascinated by the zone and, uh, you know, modern scientists have started talking about flow state. Um, but uh, very early on, I realized that Tai Chi is uh, uh, in part a study of uh, and discipline of operating in the zone, um, you know, or in flow states that way and, and taking control of it, not just having spontaneous experience of it, but really purposefully, intentionally going into that state. Um, and operating there and and that that's one of the big draws for me to tai chi as as an art yes thank you matt yeah and and that was one of the things i wanted to mention and you know for those that uh, who are out there that are uh, instructors and have you know gotten to this level it's amazing how helpful you can be to like ty had mentioned uh athletes or people that are looking to improve their golf swing or or folks that are looking to you know improve their tennis game uh, the the concept like Matt mentioned of being in the moment or 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 being one with the ball or to quote the caddyshack I guess <laughs> you know you you 
the the ability to teach that through the Tai Chi and to to develop it is really really helpful to people. Uh, also, I've personally seen uh, being able to help people through grief with that. You know, the Tai Chi helps so much because it takes you out of you know what Jim Cantor had mentioned that anxiety or that regret. Um, I think uh, a lot of a lot of people, you know, have been through it and, you know, either going through a divorce where you're angry and, you know, you cite people for all your troubles and and, you know, carry around this anger or you're apprehensive about what's going to happen next. Uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of areas, uh, loss of a loved one. You know, Denise and I just a, it's a small loss, but but we uh, we we lost a, a an animal, a dog, recently, and it, it's amazing how that concept uh, helps you through dealing with the loss. So, um, well, first of all, a loss of a dog is that a small loss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and secondly, uh, it it ties back to the military too that the VA is very much. Um, recommending Tai Chi for grief, for PTSD, for anxiety, that uh, it, it's they're doing all kinds of studies and all of those studies by the VA and by the national health organizations are saying Tai Chi is the way to go. And um, it's the way to go because of that fact that you can be in the moment, you can leave all those other things behind. Yes. Thank you, Ty. Anybody else got anything to... Chase, Chase my son there, he uh, was ADD and ADHD, and he really liked cars. And so when he got to the point that he was working on them, getting better and better at working on them, um, there was a point where he would be working in our basement. You can pull in your vehicle underneath the basement there to work on it. And... He'd be down there working and it'd be 11 o'clock at night or 10, 10 o'clock at night. And it'd be like, hey, it's time for you to come up and get ready to go to bed. I'll be up in a minute. An hour would go by. And you'd be like, hey, we need you to come up here and go to bed. It's it's getting to be, you know, it's an hour later, 11, hour and a half later, hour, 11, 1130, whatever it is. And it's like, you need to be getting to bed. What are you? I told you I'd be up in a minute. <laughs> and it was like, okay, so so he could actually tune out all that other stuff not he wasn't even trying or having to work to tune out the other stuff he was able to get into the thing well enough and he started to have a knack for it that other like serious long, like older uh long-term mechanics were impressed with some of the stuff that he was able to do but it was because he was able to get his mind into it like that and really be there in that moment like that and it made a difference in what he was able to do with mechanical stuff um, and, and so I would say that that would also, uh, I could say, I, I would say that that also helped him in other stuff he was doing through life, um, because he had a point of being able to focus in that case, it wasn't Tai Chi, but it was that going into the moment and the Tai Chi is a good way to go into the moment, especially using flow, flow ideas. So I'm trying to go say something here towards like benefit of being in the moment. Did you get? A, did you by chance get towards a list of like other benefits of being in the moment? In in my presentation, or in in I was hoping to see, you know, like I said, there's a lot of folks with a lot of uh, a lot of expertise here. If everybody else is, is there anybody else that had anything? Or uh, uh, I, I can just say quickly, and this isn't any great, you know special skill or anything, but I, I, I noticed sometimes if I were just walking down the street that every now and then things would seem a little brighter just all around and um, I was more aware of what was going on and then and after learning about being in the moment, I learned that, that that's what that was and through the, the practice of you know being in the moment and trying to be more aware of things to try to get to work to the state where just um, I am more aware of colors and sounds and sights and things that 
everything is just brighter. And I guess that's a, again a function of being in the moment generally. That you know, besides just doing Tai Chi and observing what's going on with the body and the mind, mind body connection, just um, a connection with what's going on in life generally and what's happening around me. More clarity. Right. Again, yeah. Clarity, not just for in the moment, but 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 you saw a benefit of that across the board. That's right. kind of what I'm cool. saying with Chase. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Art. A couple things. Um, yeah. When you guys were talking about the accident, it reminded me of a story my mom told me. She and my father were on a road trip and they were driving. It was a used car when they bought it. And it was already like 15 years old, but it was it was a diesel Mercedes that those things were built like tanks, you know, which was lucky because um, there was an 18 wheeler that did something funny crossing the lanes. And I don't know what, but they got they got like hooked onto the, the bolts on the tire and spun across the front of the 18 wheeler into the Meridian, which luckily at that point was, you know, like how they do like a little ditch where it's like a V shape. And so the, the car got tossed into that little ditch and the driver's side, I think it would be, maybe it was the passenger side, quacked up against the far side of that ditch and the sunroof was open. And my mother told me that she could distinguish from the debris that came in through the sunroof and hit her on the cheek. She could tell which was a blade of grass or a piece of dirt or a tiny stone or you know anything like that she could feel it on her cheek and she knew exactly what each other said she absolutely was in the moment <laughs> right then um but, but a much less severe uh scenario when i play with my grandkids kids are great at being in the moment and they get completely 100 absorbed into the task at hand you know and that's the joy when you're a teacher of children um, that's the joy that you experience at work is to see those kids being completely absorbed and focused and learning something new. They're completely in the moment, right? And so I think part of when we talk about having a childlike mind is to feel that wonder, you know, and to be in the moment, then you can really appreciate the, the miracle of even just being here, sitting here, breathing is it's, it's phenomenally unbelievable that you even exist. And to be able to appreciate that and be in the moment, it, it really, like Don's, like Art was saying that you, you feel everything's a little brighter. Everything's a little nicer. You feel a little happier. Um, it's, it's a nice place to be. And, and, you know, if you were in a situation, like, I don't know, like there's an earthquake or you're, you're in a car accident, your reaction time is much shorter and your um, whatever you do about the situation you're in is more likely to be correct. It's more likely to be accurate. You know, your precision, um, is, is spot on. So it's, it's a good idea not to sit around being afraid of things that haven't happened yet. But if you are actually in a situation, which is dire being in the moment, is the right thing to do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, if I can add on to that, um, something else I was thinking is that when one is in the moment, or, and I can, I'll speak for myself, when I'm in the moment without a lot of extraneous thoughts, I'm more receptive to intuition and sensing things and not um, thinking about, well, is it this or is that or, or what? And and doing a lot of intellectual thought processing, but just being well, here and now, and then get a, a thought or a sense of something and realize that's, that's exactly right, because there, there wasn't a lot of extraneous input, input I was reacting to, which I think is sort of the, the sense I got of what she was saying. Being in the moment is really energizing. It will like you could like normally if you were doing working on something doing a task and you had to do that task for two or three hours and you're doing that you'll come out of that you know and you're working at it and you're working at it and oh man uh, 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 and you come out of that like tired you know because you've been reducing doing for these three hours but if you're in the moment doing it can really get in there and be immersed in it like that you tend to come out of it very very energized very calm and very energized at the same time 
Sorry, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I was going to say one other thing that comes to mind now hearing everybody else talking is there's an aspect of being in the now that's unique. When you live in the past or you live in the future, you can't do anything about those. But when you live in the now, you do have control over what's happening now. So I think, you know, for people, for example, who might have a lot of anxiety about, gee, I'm, I'm just a ship in a storm. I'm being tossed around. I have no control. Well, that's true if you're not in the moment. But if you realize that you can be in the moment, just focus on what's happening right now. You can control what you're doing and how you're responding. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it is such a, a concept that's so hard to explain to people, you know, to, to try to take that, that view or that perspective. And I, I remember speaking to Sifu uh, when we started some of this training. And uh, uh, back in the 90s, I was a, a trainer in, in the NYPD. And we'd take uh, two or three brand new rookies and, and take them out in a car. And at the time, my, I didn't know what it was and I didn't know how to describe it. But at the time, my, your, my senses were heightened. I was very aware. I had been, you know, on the streets for eight to 10 years and I, I knew the way people reacted or what, what the sounds were on the streets. And, and I'd be able to ride down a crowded block on Broadway and be able to point out what was happening. And they'd look out the windows and say, you know, how do you, how can you tell that? How can you, because, you know, they were sitting there in the car trying to play with the radio and, and listening to the radio or they were, you know, comparing notes about what was happening or what they were learning or trying to figure out paperwork and, you know, trying to just grow into what they were doing. And it, a lot of this being in the moment, it does take a certain amount of familiarity. You know, you have to be comfortable in what you're doing and you have to be able to relax. So, Gad, it looks like, Ty, you got something? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it brings up a question in my mind. It sounds like being in the moment is necessary for Dong Jin, that you had a mm -hmm. knowing and that if you don't have the skill of being in the moment, along with a few other skills, then you can't develop Dong Jing. You can't That's right. know what's going to happen. And and part of my, if, if Sifu, if you're... Even Ting Jing, before Dong Jing, um, the better aspects of it require that you be in the moment. Like maybe in the beginning, you can kind of feel for things and you get some information. But to get the information like you guys see me reading off of a body... If I just start calling stuff out, boom, 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 at, at touch or just before touch, um, you have to be in the moment for that. Yes, it's important in so many of the skills. And and it's something, again, given the right training and given, you know, an indoor uh, teaching where you're you're actually taught this stuff. You know, I, I had gone through at the... Uh, at the gathering, I, I know I hope to address a couple of things, and I'm sure some of the other guys on this program will address things that run parallel and, and help you improve uh, with it. But, you know, we mentioned different stages. In the least stage of, of your learning Tai Chi, you know, you, you have to be confident and you have to be relaxed doing the form. Your body has to be able to move. You have to be able to relax in order to, you know, to get that, uh, you know, to get that in the moment training or to even start it. But after after that, you know, when you deal with the chi, like Sifu said, is you want to be able to move your chi. You want to be able to feel other people's energy. You know, it, it takes quite a bit to work on that internal aspect of the being in the moment. And when you get on to ye, you know, the ye level, you know, just that mindfulness and and being able to develop that and being able to move the mind and go on to the jings. Um, once sung is a very, very important part about being in the moment. You have to be relaxed. If you have tension, 
tension is an anticipation of something that's going to happen. So you're, you know, you're, you're taking yourself out of the moment right away. Or if you're worried, you know, somebody, you know, somebody uh, hits you with a punch from behind before, and you don't want it to happen again. And you're, you know, you're, you're thinking backwards. So, you know, this is, you know, these are all aspects. Um, and then finally on the Shen level, you know, this, uh, to get to that, to get that far, it, it has to be a, a real important or large part of your training and of your abilities. I think you're a, a really, you have to be comfortable with that, that skill set. So that's again, just with the focus on the Tai Chi and making that better and better. Um, but, you know, for the layman, for general folks out there that are just starting Tai Chi, just the ability to relax and and not be worried or not be thinking about what you have to do at work tomorrow when you get in or what your boss is, you know, riding you hard about or, you know, what the kids are going to do to you next week and having to pay, to college, pay for college in another couple of months. <laughs> you know, these are all things that take their toll on you. And, you know, you, you have to be able to, uh, to let it go once in a while and, and get in the moment or get in the zone and take care of your own mental health and well-being. So, um, so look forward to seeing folks at the gathering and hopefully, uh, <laughs> You know, giving you some exercises and some uh, some training to to work towards that that in the moment feeling. Anybody else have anything, Sifu? Or so one of the things for in the moment is that you know a lot of times when people go to do something, I'll, I'll use Tai Chi skills, and they're trying to do a Jing. They try to okay, I use some Ba Jing, or I use some, or I rooted. Or I, um, you know, they did whatever they waved and did whatever they were doing, and it's, they're doing it. And part of what being in the moment does is it makes you being it. So instead of instead of I uh, fajinged or rooted or waved, waved, that you're doing those things. So you're waving. And it's just part of what's going on, or you're spiraling, or you're um, GNC Jing, or in, or you're um, but you're doing, you're, and you're doing in a way that is being, and that requires in the now to do that, and it makes a, the difference in the skill level for what you're talking about, like to the levels too. It's 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 not a little bit; it's a lot, and then all the benefits that come with both the clarity of mind. The, uh, the, like I said, it's a, it's a clarity and a very high energy and yet very calm at the same time. And there's a lot of benefit out of that. So. Yes. Well, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get to, uh, to work a little bit on it. And hopefully it's, uh, it has a nice chapter in the book when that's, <laughs> when that's ready. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unless there's anything else anybody wants to, to throw in there I go ahead Matt <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, address for the audience that may not be aware of uh, what happened at last year's gathering so um, so uh, Carly had a heart incident um, Carly being Sifu's daughter um, and she had to be rushed to the emergency room and she got taken care of and she's, she's doing great. Um, she's been a heart uh, patient since she was a baby. Yep. Um, and it just expressed at that particular time and moment. Um, but you know, for those who were, who were there, um, you know, it was, it was stressful. Uh, we were, we were definitely, you know, our thoughts and prayers were with Sifu and Carly and the whole family the whole time. Um, but you know, I think it was also a great testament to the teachers that we have in our system that, you know, we were able to go ahead and do the presentations and have the event 
And, you know, we continued, we continued on from there. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, it was a great kind of, uh, kind of awkwardly wonderful moment of solidarity for us. Um, and, you know, everyone who was there really had a great time, um, you know, despite the circumstances, but, and, and part of that was because Carly, you know, did, did great, but, um, and we got news of her, of her progress as we went along. Um, but it was a wonderful event despite those circumstances. And so, um, you know, I really expect that it's going to be a fantastic, just a, just an over the top great event this year, you know, with, with hopefully nothing serious like that interrupting it, um, or, you know, or becoming a part of it. I think this year is just going to be a truly wonderful year for, for, uh, for the Tai Chi gathering. You know, we've got the Hilton again, it was a great space. They've got this great spread for us for the banquet. We've got a really great panel discussion lined up, a lot of great presentations. Um, and, uh, you know, and Sifu Clear will actually be there the whole time. So, um, you know, it's it's just, it's uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you are too. And if you haven't signed up yet, now's the time. Really um, make your plans, find a way to get here. Um, you know, the, there's there's rooms available at the Hilton we've got links for you on the website. So definitely check out taichigathering.com um, and make your arrangements and, you know, join us this year because it's, it's, it's going to be a blast. Clear Tai Chi, or no, it's uh, Tai Chi Gathering.com. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. Looking forward to seeing the presentation. All right. Look forward to being there. Cool. Anybody's got anything for me after the call there, just hang out and we'll do it. And thank you, everybody. And more next time. Thank you guys for the input. Thank you, Jim. Good presentation. Well, thanks, Jim. Thank you.